What to Tech is brought to you by Text Expander. Text Expander helps you communicate smarter. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. How are you? Oh man, we did not do a show last week. Um, right. <laughs> I separated my shoulder. Uh, not that you could tell by by me not wearing my sling that I'm supposed to, but mm-hmm. I separated my shoulder from my clavicle and I tore a bunch of ligaments in my shoulder. Oh, if I were to tell you I'm at like a six in pain right now, I'm at a six in pain. I'm just dealing with it. So we d- decided not to do a show last week. I had 800 things going on. Uh, and and I, I sent you the video, right, Paul? Yep. I look like a fool. It's not the heroic endeavor I was imagining. I was racing children. Yep. And losing, might I add. I was losing, and I went face first, and I decided... Rather than trying to embarrass, uh, embarrassing myself and falling face first, I'm going to do a ninja roll and pretend I meant to do it. Mm. And I did a roll and I rolled on my shoulder and I separated my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the fool now? Uh, yep. <laughs> it's a, uh, we don't, middle age does not come gracefully. Andrew. Oh, man. I'm having a very difficult time with, with middle age at this point. I bought, I bought a sports car. Uh, I, I'm, I have this ridiculous haircut now. This is what I'm yep. doing. If I had, if I was there and had lawn clippers, I would solve that problem. Here, look at this. Hold on. Oh boy. Look at this. I mean, is this what is this a normal? This is not what a normal person does. It, I've totally lost control of my life. But at least, Paul, you're here to bring stability back to my life <laughs> okay. at this point. Uh, well, you picked the right person. I have an yes. alcohol problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't we all? Yeah. Yeah, it's a cry for help," said Chris in our chat room. Mm, exactly, yes, it is. Exactly. <laughs> uh, right. There is a Free lot therapy. to talk about. Yeah, there's a ton to talk about here. Uh, we we did not do a show last week, and the iPhone got released, and there's a whole lot of other news, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. that I wanted to go over with you because there's so okay. much going on, and we're doing an ad-free show today. Uh, wow. There's no ads today, unfortunately. Not because we're we're trying to be very on, nice. Let me, and- let me get some Kahlua for my coffee then. <laughs> yes, please you go get it because there's no ads today. <laughs> Uh, but if you enjoy the show, uh, you can support us by funding us on Patreon, patreon.com slash what the tech you can go there, fund us as little as $1 per episode helps us. It goes a long way. Also Therat premium, go to therat.com, sign up for all, uh, let me see, let me load this up, upgrade to premium. Uh, mm-hmm. you can sign up there. You got 35 years of trusted voice of tech, 35 tech years, account. 35 plus years. No, oh, that must be like my 25 plus years and then Brad's 10, <laughs> whatever Brad is. Yeah. I mean, you just add right, them up. 35 years. All right. There 35 you go. Years. Yeah. There you go. Fair enough. Uh, you go there, sign up. Uh, it's as little as $7 a month or $55 annual. You could cancel at any time. Not that you ever want to, because I've been a, did I lose my Thorat premium number, by the way? What? I, why, did why would I, I know this? My, I don't what know. What are you talking about? People. Why would because, you have lost it? I don't know. People are telling me that I don't have my number. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you what I tell everybody. Just if you have a problem, Call email to help at the rot.com. <laughs> no, <laughs> just that. Uh, no, let me know and um, I'll look into it. But I don't, I, I would. Somebody I wrote to me. He's like, you're not number 24 anymore. That was my Therat oh, number. Well, I, I mean, how, couldn't we, I mean, you, how do we do this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No. Why would you, you wouldn't have lost it. Not that I pay for my Therat premium subscription, sure. <laughs> but. Uh, but I don't know. Somebody wrote that. But uh, Therat.com, my go-to site every morning. Uh, that's literally the first place I go to. And uh, Paul Me and too. Brad do an unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, luckily for, for <laughs> mostly I, just to make sure there's no spam. But yeah, I uh, absolutely love it. So go sign up there. So there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to go through some of this may be old, but I, I really there's a lot of stuff to discuss with this iPhone announcement last week. Uh, we yeah. did not do coverage. We did not do it. I, I, I was having the week from hell, so I decided this is the first time ever that I skipped out on it. But there's a lot. We should have just covered it in. live. We should have. We really should have done you know? it live. 
I don't know why we didn't, uh, but we should have. But yeah. the iPhone 12 launched with like 18 phones. So this must have been what a week ago, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, last Tuesday. Yeah. Um, it seems I want like to get a long time ago. I want yeah. to get your opinion on this because you know I have the iPhone 11 Max, right? The big yeah. one, uh, yep. Pro Max. Uh, right. I'm not upgrading. There's really well, yeah. I mean, no, you shouldn't. That, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, if you have one of last year's phones, I can't imagine why you would upgrade. But yeah, so I mean, I am. No, I mean, I, I, you know, what I, are you getting? Which one? Uh, I'm getting the normal iPhone 12. Oh, you're not doing the you're not doing the big boy, the 6.7 inch. No, so I have a really big problem, and literally a big problem with the iPhone Max. You know, the the big ones, and so my this is my last year's Max, and this thing is too, uh, it's too wide, it's too tall, hmm. and it's too heavy. It, it's like a brick. And if, if you paid attention to the presentation that they did on Tuesday, they made a big point of how the iPhone 11, sorry, the iPhone 12 Pro is thinner, lighter, and smaller than the phone it's replacing. And that's probably true. It's not true of the Max. The new Max hmm. is actually bigger and it's heavier. It's Again. crazy how much this thing weighs. It's like a lead brick. Well, is it because so, of the battery? I'm not 100% sure, but I basically, uh, you know, I, and look, I care a lot about the camera. Obviously, it's something we should talk about. There are there are uh, reasons to go pro if you like if you care about photography. And once again, there's a reason to go with the Max because the big one gets some additional features, which really don't appreciate. But when I think about kind of day-to-day -day usage, and I should say too, I'm I'm more of an Android guy than an iPhone guy. That doesn't mean I I might switch and use it and be happy with it, and I'll just keep using it. Who knows? But um, God, you know, eleven hundred fifty bucks. It's like I just I can't go that direction. It's just too much. So we I think seven for me, right now. yeah. I mean, I, look, I do care about the photography stuff. It is very clear that the iPhone twelve, just th that version which now has the screen that the pro gets um same form factor etc is the sweet spot of this lineup you know and i'm going to see if it works for me i think it's going to i really do i'm not buying this so i can return it and get another one like i i really do believe that this will satisfy my needs and i really do believe it's the best one for everybody and so if you were buying the kind of uh the mid-level one i will call it the the normal 12 I, I feel like that and the mini, if you want a smaller screen, right? Because it's the same phone, are much better deals than the pro models this year. So they Probably have, uh, and just look at this lineup, right? You can still buy yeah. the iPhone SE XR. That's still for sale, right? Yeah. The XR is for sale. Then you got the so iPhone the XR, SE. Just so, just so people know, right? So the XR is what? Is the pre-iPhone 11. It's like the iPhone. It, it, they didn't have this, but it, it's the iPhone 10 is what that is. Yeah. yeah. So the XR is the iPhone 11, but a year earlier. So LCD display, 6.1 screen, uh, pretty big bezels, you know, whatever. Um, I guess aluminum body, I think. What's the price on that now? Did they drop it? You know what? By the way, um, if they offered, if they still sold the 11 series, the Pros, it's possible the phone that I would have bought this year would have been a normal 11 Pro. They, they <laughs> like are just, selling the 11. You know. Yeah, I know, but I don't want the 11. I want, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so he, here's how they've done this, right? You get you got the you got the SC starting at three ninety nine, yep. four point seven inch display, a a thirteen processor, big bezel, old fashioned design, but old fashioned, yeah, yeah, new stuff on the inside, yeah. Uh, then you got what the iPhone a thirteen, a thirteen, yeah. Oh, I'm a sorry to interrupt again, but yeah, just just so people know, like one one of the big thing, like one of the important things that's happened this year is the the iPhone XR and the iPhone eleven were LCD displays. And, and by the way, for LCD, excellent great. display. Yeah, very good. They're great displays. But this year, they switched to OLED, and it's literally the same exact display that you get in the Pro. So smaller bezels, superior display. It, it It's kind of really ratcheted up that part of the market. So when you look at like the new iPhones, you just mentioned the iPhone SE. It's the only old-fashioned one left that's new. You know? Yeah. Right, because it has, it does have. I know it has relatively new insides, and that's great. It's all good, but the screen is tiny. It's also LCD, big bezels. You know that old, you know the iPhone four design, whatever. Um, so they they really modernized the rest of it, including giving people who like small screens a new choice. So anyway, I'm sorry. I, I no, 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 there, but. no. Go. Ahead. 
Uh, so I want to I want to run down because it, it's interesting the angle that they've taken here, right? Because now they have yeah. they start off at three hundred and ninety nine dollars and they go all the way to what eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which you know it's it's a it's a big variable, but you could tell that their attempt now is to saturate the market. It's no longer about the one yeah. iPhone that comes out every year. It's now about well, what iPhone suits you. The S. So they've also they they've really weighted it toward the bottom, haven't they? I mean, iPhones will always cost more than most Androids. I mean, I know you know big Samsungs can cost just as much and so forth, but um, they're really putting the value part of it at the lower end for Apple. So, what's the starting price of the um, SE? The iPhone 12 Mini uh, to me is the six ninety nine, I believe. Okay, so it's a yeah, mid level pricing, but um. But seven hundred bucks. I mean, if you want, I know it's like it's almost twice as much. But if you wanted like a smaller display device, like that to me is such a more modern and acceptable. But but here's here's design, the thing here, you know? right? Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at the price points, right? I mean, obviously, like I I like I'm into photography, so I would buy on on I not that I would want, but the six point seven inch iPhone. 12 pro would be the one that i would get because it has the latest camera if i was buying this mm-hmm. i'm not buying yep. a new phone the iphone 11 that i have is yeah, perfectly yeah, fine yeah. And, and i'm yep. probably going to sit on this for a year or two however <clears throat> now, now when you look at this comparison here for 399 dollars, the mm-hmm. sc let's compare to what else is on the market for five hundred ninety nine dollars, let's compare the iphone 11 to what else is on the market at that price point okay Six ninety yep. nine. Let's do that as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the iPhone has an advantage here. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, of course, yeah, of course it does. I mean, you have the ecosystem, um, you have the camera. You know, it's going to be a good camera, even on the years iPhone SE. Of support. You know, it's going to be a good camera. Yeah, if you could put up with the smaller display and you don't mind the old fashioned design, the inside of the iPhone SE is modern and will last for years and years. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, in that price range. You know, there's a Google Pixel 4a that costs less, but is uh, is less phone for sure. Um, it actually has a better camera though, because we're still at the the other thing that iPhone doesn't stack up too well in that pr- in it in that price range is the the camera. It's a single camera. You can buy various um, Samsung phones, you know, A series phones, um, Moto phones in that price range that have uh, two, three, four, whatever lenses. Okay, so um, but yeah, um, I, I but the iPhone has huge advantages for sure. I'm on Verizon's website right now, and, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about you know the insides and stuff. But I'm on Verizon's website. The Motorola One 5G UW is 549. Okay, that's 549. Now you got you got an iPhone XR. Okay, let me show. You. It's all Apple. That's wild, wild. Yeah. Uh, Samsung Galaxy S20 FE is 699. Mm-hmm. You got a Samsung 8. By the way, th- just real quick. Yeah, that's six ninety nine price point. That, I think that's the that's that sweet spot right in the middle, right? And yep. that's iPhone hits it. Uh, Samsung's hitting it with that phone you just mentioned. Uh, Google hits it with the five, the Pixel five, but that's garbage, unfortunately. Um, One Plus is actually just a little north of there, I think. Um, but that's kind of that seven hundred. That's where all that's where that's where the best. Yeah, you know, features, phones, whatever for the money. I think that's the sweet spot. So as long as like as far as like the three ninety nine or three forty nine for the SC goes, your your yeah. com- your your competition is cheaper than you by by a little bit, but yeah. you could get yeah. a Galaxy A twenty one, you could get a mm-hmm. Galaxy A eleven for one seventy nine, you could get right. a uh, Pixel A four for three seventy nine, which that would probably be the best one, uh, Galaxy A fifty one, which I don't know much mm-hmm. about three ninety nine. Right. Uh, you got you got a Motorola Z. So I it really comes down to what are you going to buy? You're going into the store. You don't want to spend that much. What's the monthly going to be? It's going to be like 14 bucks a month. Now yeah. you could buy an iPhone at that. Now you could buy an iPhone. Well, let's see. That's the thing. I when you most people aren't walking into a Verizon store and plunking down 400 bucks or 700 bucks or whatever. They're paying they're they're adding it to their bill, right? And I think you can make a really good argument at that point, especially if you're going to hold on to this thing for two to four years and you're going to pay it off over two years, six ninety nine. I mean, actually, we can just do it. We could be easy to look. I mean, if you if you want to buy a um, the iPhone Mini, the twelve Mini, right? 
You're like, well, look, I'm going to use this thing for years, so I don't mind paying for it over time. Like, what does that even look like? And I'm sorry, just slowly, slowly, slowly bringing up their website. Yeah, it's like thirty bucks a month. Um, I, I think that's I think that's where people are going to do. You know? Yeah. It's it's yeah. kind of a weird deal. I mean, I, I look. You could get a. I, actually, I just got an offer from Google. Um, a Google Pixel 4a, which is the really cheap one, which you know, kind of middling specs at best, is fifteen dollars a month over two years. You know, cheap. Yeah. But <laughs> and Google is talking to me it's now. Talking, yeah. see, it knows. Yeah, Google. Here's what I found on the web. Uh, I I feel like they they have this tremendous range in pricing, and they don't care, and they're able to sell a twelve hundred dollar phone every year to some people because it's a monthly payment. Well, it, it's, listen, they don't. People don't realize. Uh, it, yeah. It's actually funny because I was talking to my mother in law, and. She just bought she bought the iPhone 11, you know, a couple months ago. And she's like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, wow, you, you paid a lot for this. She's like, she's like, no, nah, it's like whatever, like whatever it is, thirty nine, forty nine dollars a month. I was like, yeah, but that comes out to like twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, she's right, like, right. Huh, I know. I, I didn't people, even think people of don't that. think that far out. <laughs> yep, I didn't even think. Yeah, of that. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I just. Yeah. If it, the other thing that's happening this year that's really worth mentioning, and uh, this has been true of Samsung devices for a couple of years now, it's especially true of iPhones now. If you're in the market for an iPhone and you have an iPhone, like an existing iPhone, you're going to get way better on trade than you've ever gotten in the past. And that's mm -hmm. not just from Apple. In fact, you might do better at your wireless carrier. This is one of the things that's really unique about this year. They're really pushing these upgrades. And uh, if you go, you know, I'm talking United States. I'm not really sure what it's like. Why, why do you think world, that is? Why do you think this is a big point? Why do I think that is? Um, I think it has to do with pushing the 5G thing, probably, because the, the benefit for, from the perspective of AT&T, T-Mobile, or um, Verizon is that these phones are really pushing 5G. I mean, if you, if you looked at their press conference thing from last week and took out everything that was 5g related it was like seven minutes long <laughs> like this is all they talked about um and, and is that important to you right now because for me i gotta tell you no it's because least, it's nonsense it's yeah. the least important feature because i'm getting a hundred megabits a second on my phone Here, here's what yeah so th this is what th this is this is the problem with 5g and it's not the obvious problem the obvious problem is it's not everywhere the obvious problem is there's two kinds of 5G, and one of them you have to be standing in the exact spot at the right time of day, you know, with yeah. no cloud over the sun or something. You know, there's all this nonsense about that kind of stuff. But you'll find like reviewers have done this. They've gone to some special place in Bryant Park or somewhere in New York where somehow line of sight to the to space, they've got this incredible connection. Yeah. They can thousand. download yeah. like a week's worth of Netflix shows in like 30 seconds, and they're like, "Look, that's the power of 5G." Yep, but you know what the problem with that is? We no one has a truly unlimited data plan, so no. you <laughs> if you downloaded like I'm gonna I'm gonna download the entire season of some Netflix show because I can and it takes like 33 seconds and you're like oh my god that was amazing, how much data did you just use? <laughs> like you could suck up your monthly data plan in 33 seconds, you know, and yep. and I, that's the problem. Like f the 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 promise of 5G is is real, right? The reality of it is lacking, but it will get there, you know, in some places. But there's no such thing as unlimited anymore. There's also so, a big, big uh, marketing issue with the term 5G. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'm, we're not, I'm not talking about our viewers, right? Our viewers mm -hmm. are a little bit more in the know. Sure. Yeah. Do you know how many people have said to me, I already have 5G? Oh, yeah. And I, and yeah, I yeah. say, what do you mean? And they go, no, and I when I connect to Wi-Fi, it says 5G. Because oh, because it like right. I'll give an example. Standard Verizon Fios modems have whatever, yeah. whatever, and it says 2.4 instead of gigahertz. It's it the says G, yeah. 2.4 G, it, G yeah. two point and it, and mine says 5G. People think they have it already. Right, <laughs> they, right. they you know, and I'm like, no, it's not the same thing. It's a, it's different. It, we're talking fifth generation, not not well, it's uh, also gigahertz. I mean, even if you're really on 5G, like actual cellular 5G, I mean, I finally experienced it when I went to uh, North Carolina. It's slow. <laughs> it's just not that, it, you know. So, yeah, I, I think it, it, this is really in service to the carriers. Um, 
Look, it's going to get there. And look, we're also talking about buying a device. But don't buy the device today for 5G, right? But if you need a phone, understand that if you buy an iPhone, one of these new iPhones, not the SE, but all the other ones, um, the part of that 5G capability is part of the future proofness of it, right? So we know Apple's going to give you several years of software updates, so that's good. We know you're getting one of the best processors in mobile. That's going to work great for years to come. That's good. You know, today, 5G, eh. but a year from now, two years from now, that might actually come to be um, more important to you. But I, you know, I, I would look at the the data usage stuff. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, what kind of plan do you have right, right now? What's your what's your cellular so, plan? So he, here's what sucks, right? They're, you know, they have their Verizon has multiple unlimited plans. Yeah. Oh, but but unlimited, unlimited doesn't. Yeah. So <laughs> unlimited. My, I have unlimited. By the way, if they the had unlimited, they would only have one because it would be unlimited. So my <laughs> you know phone, I mean? my wife's unlimited yeah. is yeah. a better unlimited than my unlimited. My unlimited throttles my 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 bandwidth depending sure. on what I'm doing. So at times my bandwidth is absolute garbage. And I'm like, that doesn't yeah. make sense. I don't understand because she's able to do it fine because her phone is allocated a uh, 720p bandwidth or whatever they do. And a mine is just standard definition bandwidth, just like what T-Mobile used to do, which is nonsense. Right. It's really, it, right. I mean, that's, that's such BS to do that. Yeah. Uh, considering we're on the same family plan, but my phone is allocated a different whatever. Which, I, listen, I could change it. It's fine. It's like 10 bucks more a month, but it's annoying. It, it's not really unlimited. And this, we've been talking about yeah. this for 10 years. Unlimited has never been unlimited. Right. For a very short period of time, maybe it was, but it's not truly AT &T, unlimited. Uh, had unlimited in the beginning with the iPhone and then to get, I don't, maybe it was when it went to 4G or something. Yeah, that's um, what it was. You had to kill it. And I remember at the store, whatever the event was, I, it was probably 4G. But I remember I did this at the store and the woman said to me, she goes, you sure you want to do this? And I said, well, I kind of have to. And she goes, I feel like I'm killing a unicorn. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was one of the you know remaining actual unlimited plants. Yeah. Um, anyway. So the big story for me here, obviously, listen, faster, quicker, whatever, uh, typical iPhone thing. But the camera on the on the bigger iPhone 12 Pro is yeah. a very interesting story because they have been able to do some stuff with this that really right. they didn't concentrate a lot of effort on. And I've seen some of these shots that, you know, honest reviewers have taken, and it's actually stunning. Yeah. I mean, I, t t the, the, thing, the thing I would say, though, is um, the standard iPhone 12, which has two lenses, right, wide and ultra-wide, um, and 2x optical zoom so you know same as we've had since iphone 7 pro plus whatever that was called um is awesome you know it's awesome yeah. i mean ideally what you would have is a three camera system that also included a a telephoto lens with true optical above 2x and if you get the pro actually you, you still have 2x optical it's a it's like a 4x range but it's in and out so it's 2x in 2x out yeah, and it's like it's it's not that big of a an upgrade, um, but the like you said, I mean the Pro Max is kind of interesting because two of the lenses are different. I don't remember the exact details. I know the ultra wide is a little more a little wider. Yeah, uh, well, it's view. also it's also a better quality ultra wide because the ultra wide okay. right now on this one is terrible. Yeah, and, and that's something right. I, depending on the phone you have, I see this a lot with uh, like I'm using a Huawei phone right now. When you switch from wide to ultra wide, you you can really tell. Um, I mean, not just because you get an expanded view, but sometimes the quality is lower. The HDR might not be as good. Uh, the Christmas clarity, the, I mean, the resolution could be different. That's not actually in a, a case, the case on iPhone. Um, but you'll notice like a night mode won't work well or it will work differently. You know, there's all the, it, this is a big problem with uh, depending on the, on the uh, smartphone. But there's also something like the, uh, maybe you un remember this better because I'm doing this off the top of my head, but there's, they actually float one of the sensors for stability reasons. Yeah, so it's like a. So rather than the actual sent, uh, what was it? They showed it. The the yeah. sensor normally moves. Uh, the the, st the yeah. image with stabilization. The, yeah. With the camera, this. So it works like a mini gimbal inside of the exactly hands. I would yeah. say is probably Which, how it works. By the way, um, the if you've ever and, and this is a good experiment. If you have one of the newer iPhones, right? Mm -hmm. So I, and I took a video of this, and I was actually very impressed. 
uh, my kids were on the bar and we were listening to Van Halen, right? When Eddie, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie passed you. away. Yep, yep. So we had Van Halen playing this, sitting at my bar, and my kids are just rocking out. They're doing, you know, the devil horns and everything. They're doing the whole thing. Sure. And the appropriate I did one response. of these. I did one of these. Yeah. And I, I was just recording them. When I went back mm -hmm. and watched it, it was almost like my, my phone was on a gimbal. It, it yeah, was they so do a nice, uh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And this is even. And by better. the way, this is video, and that's uh, this is the, the iPhone photography stuff uh, took a big leap last year. The still photos are excellent across the board. They really kind of got up into the top top tier. But one of the things iPhone still does way better than any Android phone is that video stuff. And you'll see a lot of footage of people like walking through a park or something. And you know, you walk, so you're kind of bouncing. I bounce a lot because I'm a big goofball, but. Um, yeah, the iPhone does like yeah, it's like a it's like a software gimbal thing, and it's amazing. And I think I mean I don't have one, but I mean I would imagine the twelve Pro Max that probably does an amazing job of that. You know, yeah, and, yeah. So listen, yeah. It, it, you know, bigger, faster, better. You yeah. know, uh, it, it, we're 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 at that point, but now the big question is okay, so. I now, I'm sorry, I'm getting 800 messages <laughs> right now. Like everything, it, it's always at two o'clock, okay? Always at two o'clock. Sure. Something happens and everybody <laughs> decides. I think Andrew's on the air. Yeah, let's, let's ask message. him a question. Let's ask him the most complicated questions. <laughs> like, how do I install this certain right. app on my phone and log in? <laughs> right. Do you remember my password? And this isn't even my wife asking me this. Or you get a text and it says something like, hey, what's the best way to put out a grease fire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, pretty much. Um, and it's from someone in your house. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Sorry. So um, I, I now the big question is, OK, so we now I think we've we've reached the limit with this. And some of these features were interesting. And it's kind of telling about the next generation of the iPhone. The MagSafe stuff is interesting to me. That they've yeah. incorporated it inside of the phone, and they have all these accessories now and all that stuff, right? That's so, very telling on where they're headed. Thank you. I was going to say, <laughs> you understand the big news there is not that we have MagSafe like, uh, cases and stuff and the stupid wallet thing, which you know is going to fall off in your pocket. It's what does this mean to the platform, and what does this mean for the future? And I think what this means to the future is there's not going to be a port on the bottom of this thing. Everyone who's like, oh, when is Apple going to switch to USB-C? I think the answer is never, right? That the next, I mean, I'm not saying it'll be next year, but whenever they do make the switch to the next thing, the next thing will be wireless. Then there's not going to be a plug. I, and by the way, if you want, no, no, this is not going to be a plug. I think that's how it's going to work. They'll sell you like a little disc, which will attach directly to where it needs to be, which is cool, by the way. That's a nice little feature that, someone should have figured out years ago, but that's cool. Um, you know, today you get like a cable, uh, next year or the year after that, you're just going to get a disc and the disc will have a USB C yep. hole on it and you can use whatever cable you have and just use that, you know? Yeah. I mean, no, no more, no more. I, I don't, I don't know how I felt about eliminating any kind of physical, you know, plug for this, but now we're in this, right. that's what, that's where we're at right now. No more ports. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's, yeah. And, and by the way, it's good. It's good for so many things, right? Um, one of the things my wife and I are literally struggling with, and I'm not, this is not like an existential thing or anything, but you know, we have like a, a, a semi older vehicle now. It doesn't have modern electronics inside. We need some way to mount a phone, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And I researched this stuff and like the very best way to do this is to get a system where you have like a, it's, you have a magnet in the case. So you have to have a special case and then you have a magnet and that's what holds it the best. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not putting magnets on my phones. It's stupid. What if it was built into the phone? Right. Yeah. And so these new iPhones would just work with these mounts in a car automatically. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? here's the other thing, excellent. right? Here's the other thing. Uh, great question. Jim. No ports. How are you going to connect it to CarPlay in the car? All it's going to be instead of a, well, a Thunderbolt end, it's going to be a MagSafe end and USB on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Right. Or uh, that, wireless. But, or but yeah, wireless, I mean, it's but, um, which, by the yeah. way, well, sucks. Car, the cars today have for, what's that? The, the wireless feature on the iPhone. From, yeah. From OK. Cars, but, th but that's something that frankly should work fine i mean I, I i use bluetooth in a car all the time to play audiobooks and music and stuff the question is can can they can data come across magsafe that's my question yeah that's a good question i'm sure good they're question. gonna figure it that they'll find a way sure 
I just think, uh, look, all I'm saying is this year it's, it's a, we're in, it's a, it's the first step of the transition. You know how Apple is like Apple puts a, you, uh, what do you call the ultra wideband uh, chip in there? Some device, they don't use it for anything. <laughs> People are like, why is it there? We don't know. It's for something that's coming down the road. And yeah, this thing, like, you know, it, it requires like special cases. Okay. There's no leather case by the way yet. I guess that's coming later. That kind of blows. That's the type of thing I usually buy right up front. I kind of like the little cases, but you know, the ability to transmit power through a case to a wireless charger. Cool. Yep. The magnet thing, smart, keeps it in the right position. Nice. But really this is about the future. And, um, you know, who knows? I don't know if it's yet next year or the year after, but it's gotta be something. I, I but here's, a, here's the other thing, right? Since mm-hmm. they got this thing on the back, it's telling that we are going to get Touch ID again built into the screen. Oh, interesting. That's how I see this because they were able okay. to put this thing incorporated in the back of it, and it didn't. Yeah. It didn't really affect the size. I mean, maybe a tiny bit. I mean, for the most part, didn't affect the size. Uh, it's yeah. seamless now. That was a big problem when they went to Face ID. I got to tell you, Face. I. I'm not. I don't like Face ID. Really? I. I don't like it, and especially. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I know that it works with the masks now, but if you're okay. moving with a mask, it doesn't really yeah. work well. So if I'm doing these and I'm walking, I can't unlock yeah. the phone. It, it, it's right. constantly I, failing. I I mean, I don't use an iPhone full time, but I, I would say of the phones I have that have some kind of facial recognition, it's the best one. Oh, um, it's by far. By far, it's the best one. But I, I like yeah, the touch ID. I yeah. always like the touch ID. Yeah, I mean, OnePlus. It's it's weird because there are phones on the Android side that do really good in-screen fingerprint readers, but they're kind of weird, esoteric phones like OnePlus or Huawei, which can't even get in the United States anymore. The Samsung stuff is terrible. Um, it is Google one that's gone. Shockingly out, thank God, bad. but it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's just I don't know. So I mean it's interesting because you know right now we're they're they're at the end of of life I would say for this device. They you know th- this wasn't if you think about when this phone came out with this design this yeah. was a reactionary device the whole notch the notch thing was not by yeah. Apple coming up with this beautiful new elegant design <laughs> it was a oh yeah. crap we can't incorporate Touch ID in the and screen. My God, they've stuck with it. Like, if you pay attention to phones, you know that on the Android side, there were phones with notches like this. They uh, still are. One... Well, there aren't really because now they're like the the notch got smaller and smaller. It disappeared. There's like pinhole uh, camera things now, and it, they like it kind of is gone. You know, um, Apple. I mean, they haven't moved it. A cent, I, you know, a millimeter. What, I don't know. What, what drove me nuts is the amount of people that defended this thing. Like, well, they still are. They're like, were... I don't even notice it anymore. Like, well, you know what you would notice if you had another quarter inch of screen, because <laughs> because <laughs> you would. It, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't by. It wasn't Apple saying like, well, we're going to be very creative and create this beautiful display. It was. Yeah, yeah. Oh crap! We screwed up. We need to come up with an answer. This is the best case scenario, and because they're yep. one of the best marketing. I I mean I th- there's nobody I mean, in history that has better PR than this company that yeah, they convinced yeah. millions upon millions of people that cutting right. into your display is a normal thing. Yeah. And then because they're Apple, they just stick with it, you know. Yeah. And everybody it's unchanged followed. for years, you know. Yeah. Cuz I mean most people were like uh, surely they're going to make this thing smaller, less tall, you know, whatever and nope, they haven't moved it at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, but the, but you know, again, Apple, because of the way they do things, what will happen is next year or the year after that, it will just disappear. It's not at this point. I think we all have to all kind of agree. They're not going to make a smaller notch. Now they're just going to get rid of it. Like that will be the next step. And oh my God, the marketing of this, you know, remember how we talked about having an all screen display in 2018 mm-hmm. or 19 or whatever it was. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. Now we really do. And so we'll see what happens. What do you think? What do you think it's going to be? You think we're going to get this radical new design with the next version, or you think they're going to? It's it's a slow progress. They're not really jumping no, leaping I, into a new new thing. No, I think uh, I think we're going to have. Well, it's Apple. We just talked about this. So they they've they've moved the iPhone back to that iPhone four, iPhone five kind of industrial design, which I think everyone agrees is a classic. You know, um, Steve Jobs at the time, remember he referred to it as like. 
looking like a Leica camera, you know, yeah, from back up from the seventies or something. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, they did that with iPad pro. They did it recently with the iPad air. And if you look at like an iPad air or an iPad pro, you can see there's no notch on those devices. So there's your hint of what the next iPhone will look like. So I think they stick with this, um, design for, you know, several years now we're talking four or five years again. And I think at some point next year, certainly the year after the notch just disappears and that will give it a really fresh look too. And it will, it will be an interesting incitement for, because a lot of people are going to upgrade now just because it's going to this design. And I think it's, it's so, so classic. I think a lot of people look forward to that. Yeah. Um, but my God, when they get rid of the notch, that's going to be another wave of upgrades right there. Yeah. The not- you know, and all those people who defended it, you know, they're, they're like, well now, I'm, oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, you know, I'm definitely getting this thing, you know? So I, I, we'll see what happens. Um, so there was no news on the, on the, on the laptops, on the, Apple right. chipset. Supposedly November, yeah. November, so we're going to get that. So a lot of people have asked me questions about that and what, what I think about it. Uh, my whole thing is, you know, I never buy a first-gen device. I think that's a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of surprises. I'm, I'm curious how long they've had this tested in the wild amongst their staff. Right. Um, I, I just, my big question is, how are you going to replace the Pro lineup? Mm-hmm. How are you going to convince people that this is as good yeah. as Intel? Or, or right. it's possible that it is. Honestly, it, it's very possible that they've pulled it off. I, I, look, we're going to look back on this and either just wonder how it is we fell for this marketing yet again. Or we're going to say, man, they really were onto something. <laughs> I just, I really don't know where it's going to land. Um. All I know is this stuff on Windows is terrible. It's that, terrible. That's what I was going to say. So nobody's been able to do this yet. Yeah, it just doesn't work. And that's a little bit of a problem. Yep. Generally, Apple, you know, Apple changed the smartphone market, but they didn't invent it. It wasn't an Apple thing. They they right. they were able to take, you know, the first iPhone was not that great. I think people don't realize <laughs> it. There was no App Store. It wasn't yeah. great. The concept was still not so but the thing was, it looked better than most phones. So people jumped on it. Uh, they don't have that luxury now because the aesthetics, everybody makes beautiful products at this point. You know, sure. uh, the, this, the the PC market has caught up to the MacBook Airs. Well, so, uh, yeah, it's a different thing product. today. You have to, it, this has to do what the other ones did. You can't introduce a laptop and say, hey, uh, this does 70% of what your other laptop does. Uh, and, but... The performance is terrible and it gets really good battery life. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like, wait, what? <laughs> like the you know, it has to be it has to literally be an upgrade for this to make sense. I don't know if it will be. I know. I, know. I don't question. know. I don't mm-hmm. know. A- and I don't think they're that I mean, listen, I don't know what their user base is. You know, I don't want to insult the Apple user base. I use a MacBook, but I don't know. Do they care? I think they I, care. Uh, you got to remember, this is a group of people that had been abused for five years ish with those terrible butterfly keyboards, which, by the way, <laughs> might be coming back on this. I'm, I'm using one right now. I, it's I, absolutely terrible. I, uh, it's they're terrible, and so yeah, I think there's a lot of sensitivity there. This is also a user base that suffered through several years of no Mac Pro upgrades. Right, remember that, and then you know the, uh, this feeling that Apple had kind of abandoned the Mac a little bit because they were focusing on the devices and what's going on and why you know so. Yeah, I think I think the, there's a little raw there, you know, a little sensitivity. So, I look, we all fall for this marketing. I mean, every time they introduced anything, it's this, it's that, it's blah blah blah. It's the best ever. It's like getting a new Mac and your Mac. You know, I we'll see. I can't wait to find out. I mean, I'm just curious. All I know is on the Windows side, Qualcomm and Microsoft have not figured this out. So what's going on with that? Is there any, is there any, where's the, pro, is it on the Qualcomm side or is it on Microsoft side where the hardware, the software is not refined enough? Uh, I can't blame. Well, actually, yes, of course I can. I mean, I would say it's a little both. And, but again, I don't, I'm not laying blame like, oh, these idiots at, you know, Microsoft and or Qualcomm. I don't mean it like that. These are, these are chips that were designed for very specific purposes. Now, my iPhone thinks I just said Siri and I didn't. So you can stop doing that. Um, 
they are being contorted to do this thing they weren't designed to do. And so it requires some concessions on the software side. We have to adapt it for these chipsets. It requires some concessions on the uh, hardware side. We have to kind of adapt the chipsets to better handle the types of workloads that PCs do. So they've been doing it slowly. But uh, the reason I would blame Microsoft ultimately is they released it as a product before it was ready, like years before it was ready. Um, and now they have uh, new generation chips. That they have like an like a slower version of it. This is a thing that's already slower than everything on the market. And they're releasing slower versions of the chips for some reason, I guess, for lower cost computers, because that's one of the other problems. These things are actually pretty expensive. So you get like a a computer that's not compatible with all the software you run. Yeah, it well, he, gets the other good thing. battery life uh, on What's the that? Apple side. We don't really know what they're doing on the software side fully yet. You know, they, well, we they, don't this, know what they're doing on either side. I mean, the hardware side, we understand know, it's going to it's going to it's going to be a new well, chipset it's going to be that but what are they doing on the software side to make this thing work and look is I, it enough I, I don't know i don't know i i would say with you know i don't work at apple okay but i i think when when apple did the mac app store that was actually a step in this direction because the point one of the points of this store as it was with the similar store we have in windows was to v- provide this trusted place where these apps would have some characteristics that could be guarantees of sorts. You're not going to get uh, an app from the Mac app store that's going to dog down your computer. You know, like these things have to kind of work properly and so forth. So I'm sure that that will play a role here that, you know, you're going to get the best experience from apps from the Mac app store. That will probably be one of their promises. But it's, you know, these are still desktop apps. These are still things that can kind of run, do whatever they want to do to your system. And you can download any app you want. I mean, will, will the Mac version of Chrome run acceptably fast in this new environment? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I have I, questions. I, I mean, I just, I'd like to, well, I don't know if I'd like to, but I, there's a part of me that believes like maybe they're going to pull it off. You know, why else would they be talking about it like this? Like, you know, the, the same thing to do would say, look, this is a transition. So over some period of years, we're going to start with the low-end devices. We're going to start with a MacBook because it's already, you know, we were already using like a Y series uh, or M, whatever it was, garbage chip. That will be just as good as it was before. And then we'll move our way up the line. We'll do MacBook Air next. We'll do a Mac mini and we'll see what happens. I mean, but they're going to have to do something really serious on the hardware side to get pro class performance not to mention uh gpus and all that stuff i don't know i have no idea how they're going to do this plus it has to run emulated software yeah tons of it <laughs> i mean everything I just, yeah all of it i mean 100 yeah. percent of it so i, guess, I don't know no, actually wh- what are they going to do well i guess if it's a if it's an ios app they wouldn't be okay but i'm t- I, you know what i'm saying i mean mac yeah. mac software yeah sure the the ios <laughs> yeah your ipad apps will run natively on a mac yeah. that's Great. Safari, right. your iPhone apps, your Photos app, your yeah. iMessage. Uh, yep. I don't know. I, I I find it. I find that we're in a very confusing state right now. We're in that next. Uh, oh, because all we have is what they've said. Well, November. We're There's gonna find no, out not a, a person weeks. in the world has ever gone on YouTube and said this is what it's doing. This is how it compares to what we're running now. It's plus or minus and blah blah blah. We don't have even a single example of it. So. No. Well, I, what they'll do I, I is they'll be, compare it to Qualcomm. They'll compare it to what Microsoft is doing, what all the other Qualcomm-based PCs yeah, are you know, and, and then they're going to blow them through the water. They're going to say, look, we're running uh, the yeah. same application uh, on, on both platforms, and look how much better ours is. That's it. That's, that's, yes. That's what it's I, I, right. Yep. It's going to be that's going to happen. So. <laughs> Unbelievable well, so, but, uh, PR, man. That's they, fine. They we have... can expect that. But I, I'm still curious what the problems are going to be, right? I'm so, you know, right now we've heard nothing about the asterisk at the end of the sentence. You know, uh, some of your software is not going to work. Your drivers aren't going to work. The blah, blah, blah. There's going to be stuff that just doesn't work. It has to be. It's a completely different architecture. It's a Mac. What drivers do you need? <laughs> okay. What do you need well, drivers I mean, for? Printers? I, Who uses printers? What is this, 1996? Fair enough. <laughs> right? What else? You we'll need see. a scanner, Paul? Scanners? Sure. Who's scanning anything? That's it. Right. That's, I mean, really, I mean, that's what they're going to say. It's interesting to yep. me. I find it very interesting. I find the whole thing very interesting. Uh, me too. I'll tell you, man, what a bizarre holiday season we're going to have with 
uh, new Macs, new phones, new new uh, consoles Xboxes out and there, Playstations, and, and nobody has a job. <laughs> I know. I know. And it, it, it's what a strange moment to release all these things. Like, listen, people are just chugging along. They're hoping for the best. It's interesting. You know, I wanted to ask your ask your opinion on this, and because mm-hmm. I don't. I haven't had time to look into it, but the Google antitrust stuff. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know if you've written about it yet. I really mm-hmm. want your opinion on it because this is something we've discussed for many years about yeah. how, uh, you know, Microsoft's antitrust issues were, uh, you know, was a, was a great example of an example being made. And it, and it really, <laughs> it changed Microsoft's path. Yep. Uh, in the two thousands, especially, you know, they, they became a very different company because of this. And Google, for many, many years, has, has somewhat been allowed to acquire these companies and to get bigger and bigger and bigger, um, yeah. you know, for good and that's, bad. By the way, that's, I mean, that, many... that itself is a really good point. The That Google has a monopoly is, in in this case, an in internet search. Literally three of my phones just lit up when I said that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, is obvious, right, and true. They do. They do. Okay, you can stop. Please stop talking to me. Why are these things doing this? Anyway, they don't do that to me. They don't like me. I, <laughs> it's been weird today. It's like that. Like my phones are haunted or something. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yes. But yeah. By the way, uh, wh- uh, how do I say this? So the I'm going I'm to mix these up. It was the House Judiciary Committee. So before the uh, DOJ sued uh, Google for abusing its monopoly power. The, a House Judiciary Committee issued a, an amazing, I think it's like 460 page. Um, it wasn't a, uh, just a paper about big tech and how they all have monopolies and how they abuse them. Yeah. And one of the things they called out correctly, and I, I did not expect this was amazing, was really the problem lies with the US government because they've allowed this stuff to happen. Like how do you, when Google comes to you and says, we want to buy a duplex, Ad duplex, <laughs> AdSense. How how do you allow that to happen? You've just handed them a monopoly. You know, Facebook should never have been allowed to buy WhatsApp and Instagram. You know, it's like we, this this lack of regulation has been part of the problem. Like we've been just saying yes to everything. So that one of their recommendations was to overhaul an, uh, antitrust law and uh, specifically to look at some of these big acquisitions and in the future to make sure there's a higher bar for those acquisitions for big tech companies, but also maybe even to look at the the current acquisitions that have already happened and say, maybe we need to reverse these. So that's kind of interesting. But with regards to the DOJ specifically, which this week sued uh, Google, um, they, they're, they're focusing on the low hanging fruit. So it's just one topic. It's just one uh, type of abuse. It's uh, search abuse. It is, um, uh, they have an amazing, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's <laughs> given it, the limited scope. They've only been at this for 15 months. They were, they're all, you know, they're not going after Google's other abuses, et cetera. They've, um, they've got a lot of, a lot of good data and Google's defense is interesting because it's so closely parallels what Microsoft did yeah. in the early days of the antitrust thing. And they're like, what we do benefits the world. People choose Google cause they love Google, not cause they have to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. We'll see. But yeah, so just so people understand, I mean, Google is the gatekeeper to the internet for approximately 90% of the people who use the internet, which is 90% of the world. So um, it gives them a unique power. And um, one but of the things that my they do. Here, right. Not that I'm yeah. defending Google or I'm, I'm, I'm picking a yeah. side here, but I'm, I'm throwing a hypothetical. Um, mm-hmm. Google can, is it, antitrust is it a monopoly if if the perception is that this is the best service the reason why google became the the number one search yeah, provider yeah, yeah. was that they were the best search provider that's the only yep. reason why they they were in when yep. they showed up how many other search providers were out there they were the best ones not because of them buying their competition uh yep. do they do they do some shady practices Hundred percent, hundred and I mean, there, there's definitely well, Andrew, okay. a discussion Andrew. for this. Yeah, there, there is. So, I, uh, this is what Microsoft argued, <laughs> by the way, as well. Like, we have the best product. What's the problem? Um, the the problem is not that Google has a monopoly, um, which they do. I don't believe that the DOJ argued that Google achieved its monopoly illegally, which you know would be a problem. 
The problem is that they're maintaining and extending their monopoly illegally. So, um, for example, uh, Google pays Apple, I think it's somewhere in the 17 to $19 billion a year rate or some huge amount of money. It might even be more than that. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But they pay Apple, uh, which is the number one maker of phones in the United States, right? They actually, there are more iPhones sold than all Android phones combined in the United States. They actually have like 55% usage share or market share or whatever. They pay to be the default search engine on iOS, yeah, like a huge sum of money. And so Google, their response to this is like, you know, so the complaint is like, well, hold on a second. Um, Microsoft, which owns Bing, and um, what was the other one? Uh, Yahoo, both also pay to be featured in iOS. And so what we're doing is no different than what they're doing. Yes, it is. <laughs> First of all, you're paying a lot more not to be featured, but to be the default. You're already a monopoly, and you're paying to make sure those guys don't get the top spot. Yeah, That's the illegal maintenance and extension of your monopoly. That's what's illegal. It's illegal because you're a monopoly. If all three of you were paying the same amount of money to Apple, uh, yeah, to Apple, to be featured on the iOS, that would not be illegal. Yeah, but you're 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 literally paying to be better positioned than the other two. Now, to your point, would most people imagine there was no default? Right, that the first time you tried to search for something, Apple threw up a little screen that said, "Here are the different companies you can choose from," and they were alphabetical, they were randomly arrayed, or whatever it was. Would most people choose Google? Yeah, yep. yeah. I bet ninety something percent of them would actually. Right. So why are they paying? <laughs> you know, like the the problem is like like you can make the argument, and you'd be correct that Google. By the way, Google doesn't just have the biggest search engine; they have the best search engine. You could argue, and I think you'd be wrong, but you could argue that the reason they're the biggest is because they're the best. What what ant the what antitrust kind of tells us is that the problem with that line of thinking is we'll never know what the best is if the biggest is paying to always be the biggest because they're killing innovation that can't occur because the barrier to entry into this market is so it's high unsustainable that un no one can afford yeah. even Microsoft, which by the way is a bigger company than Google. <laughs> right? Can't compete in this market effectively. This is the barrier to entry problem. So Google ensures it's number one on Android phone, which it, you know, sort of controls. It ensures it's number one on iOS, which is the other dominant platform. They are ensuring that they are extending their search monopoly from the web on desktop to mobile, which yeah. is now the biggest computing platform. And that's illegal. That's the problem. See, yeah, so we'll I, never know. We'll never know if a, a better search engine could ever exist because listen, they're ensuring the it can't. Here's the reality. Uh, yeah. Google got to where they are not because <laughs> of a monopoly or antitrust uh, behavior. It was due to their service being better than everybody else's. Great example. Uh, Gmail. Gmail is the best example of this. Okay. Before <laughs> Gmail, yeah. I don't think people realize how terrible email storage in the cloud was. That's Internet. what really drove people to Gmail. <laughs> it, it, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to argue this. I, I, uh, you're right. I mean, that's fine. But the problem is Google is, and this is not part of the DOJ suit, although this will be part of other lawsuits that will come down the road, both from the DOJ, from U.S. states, and in the EU. The problem is that Google, which has achieved this monopoly and is a gatekeeper to the Internet, now knows what people are searching for and can pro offer up services that cut out third-party services that at that time were in fact better than anything Google had, but you never heard about them because Google never let you find out about them because Google only is pushing their own services. So yeah, I mean, as the years go by, you can make this argument like, yeah, Gmail is, is you know, it's better than whatever else is out there. And it is in some ways, of course it is. But the, the way they got there and the fact that now uh, you and I were like, hey, you know, there's this, this email thing that we need to solve. Let's start a little, we'll do a little startup and we'll we'll make email and we'll fix it. We're going to fix email. Can't, it's not going to work. There's too much, these, these players are all established. They, they're, this market is unassailable. So it's, it's, it's the, the problem with big tech and this is, you know, the problem, it, it the problem isn't the people like, yeah, but you know, Google Maps works great. Like, I, I, you know, I don't need this other thing or Gmail works great. I don't, you know what? Yeah, but <laughs> because these things are so humongous, 
there is no incentive for anyone to even bother. And they would be killed if they tried because Google is a gatekeeper to the internet. Yeah. They will prevent you and I and our Bob company or whatever we call it from even existing, let alone succeeding. It doesn't matter how good our ideas are. We can never bring them to market because they Listen, literally are a gatekeeper. On, on a whole different side, right? That That's not part of this. Uh, a lot of conversation has been going around around Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act, right? Yeah, yeah, This yeah. kind of plays yep. into that. When you are, and forget about the side, forget about the left or right or whatever. I am very much against censorship in any capacity. Uh, I'm yeah. not for, I'm not, listen, and I'm not advocating hate speech or any kind of violence. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking yeah. about a, a provider like Google deciding yeah. that right. they're not going to show something because they, as a company, do not believe that that is accurate or they, they, they as a company, it doesn't fit their, it doesn't fit their standards. Right. That is a problem when you are saying that it should be an equal playing field, right? right. That's where the problem is. So I think this is all tying in. If we're talking yeah, about I mean, that's, this, that's, this is where right. this is tying right. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, not, I mean, right. The problem is uh, th th that kind of thing is a bigger issue for companies like Facebook, although yeah, Google probably is in the mix there as well. Um, the problem is, belatedly, what we've come to understand is that by allowing hate speech and misinformation and all the nonsense that's online, conspiracy theories, whatever, outright lies to propagate. We have created an electorate that is misinformed and thus are not voting in their own best interest. You know, like one of the most important things about the internet is its ability to disseminate information and that we as consumers on one level, but we'll just say uh, the electorate on another level, uh, can be easily informed about the topics that matter to us so that we vote accordingly and our government acts on our behalf. But we're not doing that because we've been misinformed. And there's a huge percentage of this population that has no freaking idea what it's talking about, and they're going to vote. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to vote for stupid. And I'm sorry, but that that is literally usurping democracy. So, yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> no censorship is like the ideal, but the reality is for our country to survive, for any, for us as a people to survive, literally survive, there has something has to change. So I don't, I, and I don't have the answer to that. I don't know if, what that means, some form of regulation. But again, I, I think ultimately, because that's going to, that's it's not. It's a very complicated scenario. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. No, it's like people are like oh, 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 less government is always better. You know, yeah, is it? Listen, I, I mean, I, I, I want. I don't want. I uh, great example. Okay. I'm going to give you, and, and this mm -hmm. is on a whole different level. Yeah. I, if we are discussing and, and I'm not going to say it right now because Google may or may not demonetize this video, <laughs> but okay. the, the illness that's happening yeah. around the world right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Trump virus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the illness. Yep. Um, yep. If I, you know, every time I write that on Twitter, I what? get my account. Uh, if I write that, the, the illness is, full name on Twitter. Really? I get a, uh, I need to verify that it's me on Twitter and it does Which... it for all the social media accounts that I manage. Oh, yeah. So what happened, I, over the summer, I lost two of my accounts that I don't log into because okay. what happened was I wrote, uh, right when, remember when I got sick a couple months ago? Mm -hmm. Um, when I got sick, I, I wrote that I tested negative for it. I didn't log into Twitter for two days. And when I logged back in, it said that I need to uh, verify that I'm using it because it was suspicious activity. Hmm. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Okay, what did I do? I clicked OK. And then I realized it happened to every single one of my accounts that I've ever logged in with this IP address. Oh, I was like, OK, that's a glitch. Cannot happen. Two weeks ago, it happened again. I wrote it. Uh, I made a joke about people the, the 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 stupid people that believe that 5g causes that illness all right and i had my account same thing happened that's yeah. uh, you know it's uh, frustrating yeah, yeah. it's frustrating and it's 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 a whacked out algorithm but right. i think that's a problem and yeah. that's a problem that that they will come up with a solution for obviously it's a very it's a forget uh, about the climate is ridiculous but yeah okay it, it's, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. what, what's the point? If that's happening, that yep. I find that to be an issue. 
okay. that I can't monetize my video if we mention this. See, that that's my issue with, with some of this. Obviously, listen, I, I'm not for uh, at all for anything hurtful or, or any kind of... Uh, sure any kind of post or websites that could cause any kind of, you know, serious damage to, to, to this country or any, any, any of our rights or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not screaming for government control. I'm not also screaming that the government should never do anything. It, it really has to do with uh, tech companies and, and the maturity of tech companies. We're still in a very immature level for technology. Well, yeah, this so, is all new. By the way, this, uh, yeah, so part of the problem, the, the, the notion that the law cannot keep up with the pace of technology is not new. This is, probably something they dealt with in the 1800s when the railroads made it all the way across to the other coast and you know uh, we airplanes happened and whatever so we're still kind of dealing with this, this kind of age-old problem but it's very real and in the same way that these big tech companies maybe shouldn't have been allowed to expand as rapidly as they did and now we're in a position where you know they're richer than most countries um and we're looking at a few, you know, you've seen the movie Alien, right? There are no more countries. Yeah. It's all companies now, you know, Wayland Corp and all that stuff. I mean, it's like, it, it's, you know, we're kind of careening toward this future. So I, I again, I, I know that this kind of thing always freaks some people out, but I, I really feel like these companies need to be regulated to some degree so that the behavior you're describing is not something that Twitter made up on the spot because they had to respond to a thing and it kind of creamed out of control and now it's infecting this person that doesn't have anything to do with the problem. But maybe there needs to be some kind of a standard that occurs at a higher level than the company, you know, that all companies have to adhere to. Yeah. So like the GDPR in uh, Europe for uh, uh, data protection and pi uh, privacy, um, you know, we need, maybe we need things like that here, you know, so that free speech is protected, but, you know, free, it's like the yelling fire in a, a movie theater thing. I mean, yeah. we, we have free speech, but we also can't use speech to cause harm to others. I feel like Isaac Asimov solved this problem with robots. Did he? Is that, is that the robot? Yeah, the, the, the law of robotics, you know, they had to kind of fine tune it over time because there were all the little loopholes. I don't Listen, know. Listen, this is, this is, it, it's not a, it, it's not it's a, not it's, a there's no fix no, for this overnight. No. This is going to be no, and there's a, no, there's no, there's not even a fix like everyone would agree to. It's like, it's not like we can, we're going to, like, someone's going to say something really smart and everyone's like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's it. <laughs> you know what? You never <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, across the, I'm going to cross the aisle. That's great. <laughs> you never know. That, listen, never, I, I yeah. think, I think it's a, uh, it's a tech immaturity thing. The way we use technology, yeah. uh, I always say this in 20, 30 years, we're going to look back at this and say, my God. Uh, we were idiots. Uh, yeah, no, this I, is going to be like, like when you watch an old movie in black and white and everyone's smoking and there's like a cloud of smoke in the top of the frame the whole time. And you're like, oh my God, didn't they, didn't they know that this was horribly, yeah. you know, uh, and, you know, they did or they didn't. I don't know. But they, uh, yeah, I, we're going to look back at the same thing and be like, seriously? Yeah, I but, that yeah. And, and that's Sorry. and I and I always say that to people. We're in a very immature level of yeah. technology. This phone, this concept is only what less than 20 years old yeah the so internet yeah. as we know it you know the social media age of the internet is 10 years old to the to, i mean no 15 years sure. old let's say 15 years old uh we are in the infancy of this and yep. what we know today and the way we perceive the internet today is going to be drastically different in 20 to 30 years whether it's going to be for the good or for it's for the bad, we don't know yet. We don't know right. the direction this is headed. What yeah. I'm saying is what we have today is going to be a very, you know, everybody, it, it, I was talking to someone that that is very smart, very smart guy. And he was talking about, you know, just like even in the 90s, how we use the internet. And he said, sure. because, you know, honestly, it's not so much different than today. But now we've hit the critical point of it's become well, mainstream. It's yeah, I, it's right. no I, longer I, about yes. Paul, you and myself and, and the hundred yes. people that are watching this that have very strong opinions on this. Here's, it's now yeah, about uh, yes. everybody else. It's, it's everybody. Yeah. So was like, I saw a comedian who was joking about people hopping on their phones to review a restaurant, you know, and he's like, why would you do that? He's like, what do, does the world really need to know your fine honed opinion about your one time experience at a restaurant? You're now never going to visit again because randomly you had a bad experience. Like, like what makes you think that your opinion is so valuable that it needs to be out there in the world? You know, the funny thing is like the problem is like, that's a, it's a mainstream activity now. 
Yeah. That used to be, you know, professionals did this. Like this was yeah. someone's job at a paper or something, you know, like this is what they did for a living. Like they made money doing it. And, uh, you know, and so this is kind of a neat thing. It's like, uh, everyone gets to publish their opinion online. There's some positives to that for sure. But then, you know, everyone knows when you go to Amazon to buy something, you got to look at some of the reviews and realize like a lot of those one star reviews have something that uh, was them <laughs> or it was about the shipping of the product, the which has nothing product, to do yeah. with the quality of the thing. You know what I mean? Like people are, you know, a lot of people are not that smart, <laughs> you know, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, time to wrap it up. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for thank joining you, me as always. It's always a pleasure. Uh, do you got 10 minutes to do a little post show? 10 minutes. ten minutes. I have 10 minutes. Andrew. Okay, perfect. We got 10 <laughs> minutes. Excellent. If you're watching this, stay tuned. We're going to do a little, uh, little bonus show. Uh, and, uh, well, hang on. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Whatever pops in my mind. That's the beautiful thing about this bonus show on Patreon. Patreon.com slash what the tech you can go there. Sign up. Uh, and uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week. We'll see you all next time. Take care.